Should we just start with Raw, get it over with? A lot of news coming out of this Raw show. Fine. Let's go real fast. All right, so it opened up with Bobby Lashley and MVP in the ring doing a promo. And out came Brock Lesnar, and he was in his gear, and he said, Listen, you can't be happy about how you won last night. I mean, Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman, everybody interfered. But don't worry, he said, I will not be choosing you as my opponent at WrestleMania. I will be choosing Roman Reigns. But it will be a title versus title match because I want you in the ring tonight. And, of course, MVP would not allow this. And so Lesnar started the fans doing a chant, which they bleeped out. And uh, they announced that Lesnar is going to be in the Elimination Chamber match in Saudi Arabia, which means literally there's only two options here. One, Lesnar walks out of the chamber as the champion. Or two, Lesnar gets beaten in the chamber. I'll talk about this in a minute because there's a lot to talk about there. Rhea Ripley beat Nikki Ash in eight minutes, four minutes of which was during the commercial. Hit her with the riptide, pinned her clean in the middle. You know, I, I normally, like, if any other company would say, well, it's the end of that feud, but I'm sure they'll keep wrestling for, like, you know, all the way to WrestleMania. We had the Alpha Academy Academic Challenge. Uh, there was a scooter race, and last week they were teasing that Randy Orton was going to have to get on a scooter and uh, Otis as well. But uh, Otis did not get on the scooter. Uh, but they literally, they did this for like an hour on and off during breaks. And then right when Riddle was going to cross the finish line, Otis just ran him over and killed him. And then Chad Gable crossed the finish line. That was a payoff to this one. Uh, last week's was awesome. This one sucked. And on top of that, no Randy Orton on the show. And I do not know what is going on with Randy Orton. But I was told that he's going to be gone for a little while. I don't know why. I don't know when he'll be back. They're continuing on as if, you know, they'll be getting a championship match, maybe at the chamber. So he might have like a minor injury. I don't know, but he wasn't on the show. And uh, of course, when they say he won't be back for a little while, he could be back Monday. But that's what I was told. We had the first of many Alexa Bliss segments. She's been given a replica Lily. It uh, sucks. Miz. <laughs> Beat Dominic Mysterio in two minutes. If you hear they're going to do Dominic Mysterio versus Miz, you think, what a styles clash. Well, it wasn't because they didn't even do a match. Miz ran around, and then there was distraction. He pretended like he tripped. The ref ejected Ray. This idiot Dominic is distracted and pinned with a skull-crushing finale. This did nobody any favors. KO show with Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins reveals, I'm in the chamber. Kevin Owens says, what? I have to qualify to get in the chamber. Seth says, well, I beat Roman Reigns last night. I don't have to qualify. Kevin says, why don't you go to the back and you tell them that if they don't just put me in the chamber, you are going to walk. You're just going to refuse to to be in the chamber. Rollins like, eh, he's not down with this idea. But it's too late because out comes uh, Kevin Owens' opponent, Austin Theory. Austin Theory beats Kevin Owens. I would go as far as to say clean. He kicked the ropes into his uh, genitalia and then hit his finish and pinned him. Austin Theory is now in the chamber, replacing Shane McMahon. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Angelo Dawkins and Dolph Ziggler, four minutes. It was fine. Uh, Angelo Dawkins, hometown guy, he won, but, I mean, nothing really to write home about. Elimination Chamber qualifying match. Riddle and Otis. Wrestling was good. It was, and I swear, and I love both guys, the longest 7-minute and 26-second match I've ever seen in my lifetime. Otis just beat this guy for 7 minutes and 25 of the 7-minute and 26 segments, or seconds. <laughs> just went forever. And then uh, Riddle did a comeback, floating bro pinned him. That was a match. Riddle is in the Elimination Chamber. Bianca Belair defeated Carmella. Five minutes and 32 seconds. Felt like it went five hours. Stalling, 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 stalling. Match finally starts. Carmella gets the heat. Chin lock, chin lock, chin lock, chin lock, chin lock. Then they botch the spot, and then Bianca just grabs her and hits her with her finish and pins her. Not good. Show wasn't looking good at this point. But then it all turned around because we had AJ Styles and Rey Mysterio. They went 12 minutes. Very, very good match. Two professionals. The fans got into it. 
Everything looked good. AJ Styles beat him with the Styles Clash, so now he's in the chamber. This was the best thing on the show by miles and miles and miles and miles. And then the main event. Yesterday I said, if you look at the storyline here, there is one person that Ronda Rousey should want to face at WrestleMania after winning the Rumble. It's a Becky. Because last year, or uh, 2019, they did the uh, three-way at WrestleMania, and Becky kind of sort of pinned Ronda. She was supposed to, but she actually didn't because Ronda got her shoulder up. It was an accident. She didn't mean to get it up, but just they, they screwed up the finish. And uh, then Ronda left. And so knowing all of this, Ronda should come back and say, bro, I never got pinned. I never lost my title. I'm going to beat you, and I'm going to win my belt back. But instead, Ronda gets in the ring and she explains, I am the main event over Becky Lynch. Becky is my undercard. So I'm not going to dignify her with a big match at WrestleMania. I was like, what? But then she doesn't even challenge Charlotte. The Becky comes out. I mean, she's dressed like a Fuki Gun Death. And this segment was death. And she's in there and she's like doing all the ha-ha. Ronda's supposed to be a baby face, but she looks like she just hates life and doesn't want to be there. This segment was a... I mean, when this segment was over, I didn't want to see this match. I certainly don't want to see Ronda and Charlotte. Like, I don't know what's up with Ronda, but, bro, she's out there acting all heelish. But the fans are, like, cheering her. They cheered her the night before. They cheered her when she won. They cheered her when she came out here. But she hates them. <laughs> I was just like, whatever. And then she lays out Lynch, and then she says, I'll make my decision Friday even though they promised she'd make the decision on this show. So I thought this segment was a total swing and a miss. But uh, I rushed through the Raw report because there's a lot to say here. Ronda is likely, and anything can change, she is going to challenge Charlotte. It's going to be Ronda and Charlotte this year, and it's going to be uh, Ronda and Becky next year. That's the plan. For the men... It is going to be Ronda Rousey, or I'm sorry, not Ronda, Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. That's the WrestleMania main event. So what they want to do is they want to keep Roman strong, and they want to keep Brock strong. Okay? So their brilliant idea at the Rumble was, well, you know, we're going to have Roman look strong by beating up Seth with a chair, but we don't want to hurt Seth, so we'll do a DQ, and then Roman's going to beat him with a chair. Which, by the way, Seth didn't even sell the next... So, like, nobody knows what they're doing here. So, the the chamber match, Brock Lesnar, I mean, he either wins or he gets beaten again in their plan to keep him strong going into the match with Roman Reigns. I was told multiple times, and uh, it's WWE, so this means nothing, but I was told multiple times it is not title versus title, Roman versus Brock. Even though Roman and Brock have done storylines talking about how they want it to be a title versus... They're telling you what they want, but apparently that's not the plan. So it either is the plan now, or Brock is going to get beaten in the Elimination Chamber as part of the plan to keep him strong going up against Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. This is one of those things where they got all these ideas about what they want, but like they have no idea. Like, if I want something, you know what I'm saying, Mike? If I want a ribeye, do you know what I do? Well, I go, to the, I go to the store and I get a ribeye, okay? Uh -huh. These guys want to push young talent. I don't know how many times I've heard Dave say this. They know they need young talent. They want to push young talent. Well, that's all fine and good, but they have no clue how. You know how you push a young talent? You push them and they don't lose. These idiots, oh, well, you know, we'll give uh, you know Austin Theory a win, but then you're going to beat him in the chamber. They, they don't know what they're doing. So the other thing is, yes, I can confirm that as of a couple of days ago, their plan, their plan for Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania was Shane McMahon, okay? I think that's changed, but that absolutely 100% was their plan. Hey, girl, how was your New Year's? Oh, it was so much fun. Brooks and I put our boots on, and we did a little Texas two-step. Oh, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not like that. Daddy, these girls are so ew. Um, who are you? I'm Wendy Chu. And why are you looking at me like a ham sandwich? Wendy who? Ham sandwich? Wendy Chu? 
then it ends. Bro, that was like easily a thousand times better than what they did. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.